Well, good morning. Today is Thursday, April 9th. Uh, this is Monday, Thursday. In the tradition of the church, Monday, Thursday is the day that we, um, that we remember specifically uh, the Last Supper, when Jesus and his disciples gathered in uh, an upper room in Jerusalem, in an upper room of a house that was provided uh, to the disciples by the Lord. It is in this meal that, uh, that Jesus gives the famous upper room discourse, where he speaks of the, the new covenant that he will uh, institute in the shedding of his blood. Of course, we commemorate uh, this, uh, this act every time that we celebrate the sacrament of communion together. And the two, there are two Old Testament passages that really um, give foundation to what, well, there's several, but two specific passages that give foundation to what Jesus does uh, at the Lord's Supper. One comes from Jer Jeremiah, it's a very short passage, and the other is a little bit longer, and it comes from uh, the book of Ezekiel. And so, to, uh, and so this morning as we um, listen to a bit of scripture and go to God with our prayers this morning, I want to invite you um, to be thinking in your mind about the disciples gathered, coming together, and sharing what they thought would be just a, a very typical Passover meal. And yet in that meal, Jesus is going to do something very powerful that redefines all of what that meal means. And so let us begin with just a few moments of quiet and stillness as we come into God's presence this morning. The voice of the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 31 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Again, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And from the prophet Ezekiel in chapter 11, this is what the Lord God says. I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. They may walk in my statutes, and they may keep my rules and obey them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. We remember what we read the other day from Exodus 12. In Exodus 12, uh, there is instruction, detailed instruction, uh, about how the the Passover lamb is to be slaughtered at twilight, which would be about 6 p.m. The lamb forms the centerpiece of the Passover meal. And Jesus, we imagine, sitting there with the lamb and all of the, all of the elements of the typical Passover meal is with his disciples. And we call this the, the, Lord, the Lord's Supper. Good Friday has now officially begun even though it's still Thursday by the way we tell time. Remember, in those days, days were, were um, measured from sundown to sundown. So actually, the Lord's Supper 
is the first element of Good Friday. Now, just prior to the meal, you remember that Jesus washes the feet of the disciples as a model of servanthood, of how we are to love one another. And that's the new, co- that's the new command that Jesus uh, gives his disciples, to love one another just as I have loved you, is what Jesus says. And then at a, at a poignant moment of the supper, Jesus makes this, this, this declaration to his disciples, a shocking one. He says, one of you will betray me. And of course, that's just about the time that Judas will get up and leave the meal, having already agreed to betray Jesus. But it is again during that meal where Jesus redefines the Passover feast. And he's explaining that he is ushering in the new covenant, the, the, the new covenant from God that the prophets had been, um, had been de- describing and declaring. And so when Jesus says to take the bread, and to take the cup, my body and my blood do this in memory, in remembrance of me. It is a powerful, powerful transition that is happening. This truly is the, the, the coming to the end of the old covenant ways and the beginning of the new covenant that will be instituted on the cross. A lot happening uh, on Monday, Thursday, particularly in the upper room during the meal and during the, um, during the Lord's Supper, the sacrament we call communion. And I want to invite you now to just for a minute um, consider the, the, the communion celebration that we do on a monthly basis. And I want to ask for you to think about what that meal, what that moment in our worship means to you. Has it been a powerful experience to you when we take communion together? Or has it just simply been what we do once uh, once a month? Is there more to that than we have uh, given credit for, given it credit for? So take a minute and just reflect on what happens in the in the communion um, in the communion sacrament. Let's just sit with that for a couple of moments and then we will pray for the day. Again, if you want to continue to work with that question, I invite you to pause uh, the video. Otherwise, let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we do give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the life that you have breathed into each of us. Lord, as we gather in various homes across the across the valley, we, we thank you for the way that you have connected us one to another in community and that that happens because of the work that we see done in Jesus through the life and the death and the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus we see you bringing into being this this new thing this new creation this new covenant sealed in the blood of Christ, and that we as your people get to share in that, to be a part of it. Lord, we pray that the meaning of all that happened during Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, would would never be lost on us, but that we would be able to dwell deeply into what it means for us to follow, to, to follow a Savior who was a, a wound a wounded Savior. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this day. We pray that as we go into it, that you would be with us. 
that you would guide us, that you would show us the all that you would have for us to be about this day. Lord, in unique and unusual circumstances through the reality of quarantine, we pray that you would continue to guide us into conversations and interactions, whether in, whether in person or online, in other electronic modes, that we would be able to speak in ways that lift people up and point them to the reality of the kingdom that you are bringing into this world. Lord, this day, we want to pray that we would be people that you would use, that you would put in places where we can be a part of the bringing about of your kingdom. And so, Lord, we do pray that this day, we would be people that in all we do love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ and love the people that you place in our lives. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, it's good to be with you. We will see you tomorrow morning for uh, the Good Friday version of our devotion time together. I hope you have a great day. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.